That's my uh, affiliations to disclose. Again, this is on uh, Vivegron 75 milligrams, which was the U.S. study differing from the very excellent Japanese study of 50 and 100 milligrams. The, a single dose was, uh, was chosen. Uh, obviously, there's still an unmet need in addition to the new drug class, the beta-3 drug class. This is a 75 milligram single dose. It does not have a metabolic issue with uh, CYP2D6, which makes it a unique drug. It's been evaluated in 4,000 OAB patients. It was uh, previously, uh, uh, these, these studies were done by a previous uh, company that uh, ran the studies on the drug. And probably one of the things to note here is that uh, in this study, uh, there was a rapid two-week sustained efficacy versus placebo, uh, which was also seen in phase two and three studies. This was the standard 12-week treatment period randomized to the active control in this study was uh, tolteridine, but statistical analysis was uh, uh, decided, uh, pre-decided uh, for only uh, drug versus placebo, the tolteridine acting as an active control. The co-primary endpoints have been previously reported, and uh, this study will deal with uh, some of the secondary outcomes, uh, primarily uh, quality of life. A total of 1,518 patients were randomized. The uh, patient characteristics are pretty uh, standard for an OAB study with uh, male to female ratio being uh, 85 to 15 percent, and OAB wet to OAB dry being uh, about 80 to 20 percent. Again, there was a nice distribution of age. The previously uh, presented work dealt with UUI episodes, and this is on the left is the improvement in daily UUI episodes. And you can see that there is separation at two weeks, and every data point shows a superiority, at least an increase, but not as st uh, statistics weren't run uh, against tolteridine, but was a statistical superiority at all data points against placebo. On the right is the uh, frequency or daily micturition numbers. Uh, the, you, this is uh, on urgency, and as you can see, urgency episodes were uh, all, all increased at uh, every data point that was measured. The key secondary efficacy endpoints uh, for this presentation are the change in the daily urge episodes, the percentage of OEB wet with a greater than 75% reduction, change in average total incontinence episodes, change in average volume voided per micturition, and the change in the coping subscale score from the OABQ long form. And you can see, again, these were uh, predetermined uh, outcome variables. And additional quality of life uh, outcomes were looked at, and that's because the entire uh, OABQ was utilized. And of course, it can be separated between the OABQ uh, short form for your uh, OAB symptoms and the quality of life and HQRL assessment. This is the data on 75% responders for UUI at week 12, and you can see that there's a uh, significant uh, improvement over placebo for greater than 75% reduction. Improvement uh, for total daily incontinence episodes and volume voided with daily incontinence episodes on the left, again showing a profound and statistically significant difference at uh, all data points measured. and uh, a a numerical superiority uh, over the active control, and the same with volume voided. Uh, although there seemed to be a uh, relatively robust placebo re response, and not necessarily due to anything that uh, can be identified in the protocol in this area, which has always been looked at volume voided as being a, uh, a very important variable. You we can see that the volume voided numbers increase with uh, active drug uh, significantly over placebo. Uh, Vibegrin demonstrated a greater LS mean change from baseline at week 12 than in the OABQ long form measurements. And of course, as we note, the coping subscale has been noted uh, to be the most, uh, maybe the most uh, important for uh, patients, at least with uh, respect to urinary incontinence. And as you can see, there is a, an improvement uh, a st and a statistical improvement for uh, Vibegron over placebo in uh, all of these uh, subscales, but uh, uh, very uh, prominently in the coping uh, subscale. 
and the OABQ measures, and uh, we, we can also see this that by background demonstrated a statistically significant improvement versus placebo on, uh, all, uh, on five of the six OABQ long form measures. Again, with the coping subscale highlighted. A very favorable safety and tolerability profile uh, by background and placebo had similar rates for hypertension and for increased blood pressure. And again, with the beta-3 agonist category, we've been uh, very careful to look at these with uh, all agents that have reported data in the category. Uh, UTI and urinary retention rates were also low. But again, m most uh, significantly is the absence of anti-muscarinic side effects. It's not in the anti-muscarinic uh, category anymore. But uh, also, again, looking at the things that you're concerned with with the beta-3, which are the cardiovascular effects. So in conclusion, as reported, uh, once daily, single dose, 75 milligrams, demonstrated a rapid onset of action and statistically significant benefits versus placebo on the co-primary endpoints and change in the average number of UUI episodes in daily micturitions. And in this study, results presented here demonstrate UUI response, total daily incontinence episodes, volume voided, and quality of life as measured by the OABQ. Again, uh, in this analysis, Fibegron was well tolerated with a very favorable safety profile. Uh, comparable treatment emergent events uh, compared to placebo with few AEs over 2%. And uh, this may represent an important new therapy to address a large unmet need. Thank you.